Well, I think uh, boys and girls, when we talk about youth, they're usually just generalized. They're looked at as a homogeneous group, but that's not the case. They have uh, different ambitions, different aspirations, and they have different responsibilities, if I can put it that way. For instance, um, I don't know, there's this uh, conception that there's some girl-specific agriculture activities and there's some boy-specific. If I can give an example, the, you look at cash crop farming as a more male-oriented um, you know, activity, whereas the other, like horticulture activities, like growing tomatoes and vegetables, more as girl-oriented. I don't know if that's the right way of looking at it, but when you look at, say, social commitments and social responsibilities, that generally tends to be what influences the, the choice of what to choose from, because girls are expected more to be at home, you know, they have um, household chores where they're expected to do all those things. So the needs and the aspirations, they are totally different. And when we talk about youth in agriculture, we have to look at that first. They don't have the same challenges. They don't face the same challenges. They, they, they want different solutions to different problems. I would not expect the policies to look very different because really right now what we're fighting for is for the youth to be well represented in policies as a group. But then when we, when it's, it's the first battle, but then once that battle is won, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. So I would say the first step is to actually win the youth engagement in policies and then go on to then analyze the differences.